I just wanted to really thank you. It was really, really good to see you present. Thank you. It was My really, pleasure to be here. Yeah, really nice. Uh, I just have a question because there is there is a little fun going on in Czech Republic right now because there is a Czech state fund uh, with 30 million dollars that they are going to they they want to put it in startups and stuff, right. which is which is far far more money than ever any in investor has put in startups in Czech Republic. And my question is, is it, is it uh, for you a difference to present to a state fund, like, because they are, they're, they're like, you know, people from political yep. parties and stuff, than to like classical VCs, classical businessmen and angels? Yes, most definitely. Yeah. The only problem is I can't answer the question with a specific answer. I can tell you this much, venture capital people, they want to know how much big money they're going to be making out of this investment in three, five, ten years from now. Angel investors don't care so much about how much money they're going to make, they care more about the technology and the people. But when it comes to a fund like you've described, the only way I can really answer that is that you need to present to them so that they see value in what you're talking about that may be totally different than what an investor thinks. Like a VC, they want, to know, they want the return. A political might want a better reputation for how they support entrepreneurs in their country. Mm -hmm. Or that fund might want to be well known for what they're doing with investors. And then, they, then I would present to them in a way that resonates with why they're investing. So figure out why these people are investing and hopefully the presentation that you make will be geared towards the reasons that will get them excited. Because the same things that get a venture capital or a VC excited probably wouldn't get the group that you're talking about excited. Because maybe they're not looking for return on investment in dollars or, or any monetary. They might be looking for reputation. They might look, be looking for a tax write-off. Yeah. There's some investors in the States that invest in people not necessarily for the money return, but mm -hmm. if you have to pay a million dollars in taxes to the U.S. government, you can write a check for a million dollars, or you go invest in 10 companies, invest 100,000 in each company. If one wins, great. If they don't, well, you would have had to give that money to the government anyway. Yeah. Right? That's not a one for one dollar. I can invest 100 grand in you and not pay 100 grand in taxes, but... So. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Did that. For yeah, yeah, it's it's our idea because it really is a different approach to that. There, there are going to be some professionals as well in the panel that will, you know, determine who gets the money or not. But I guess that what you said is is really true because they will seek for glory, if I may say it like that. They'll they'll try to pick up projects that they may present after that, like this is my work. Right. Yeah, so. so you remember tonight we talked about the recognition. Yeah. One of those four things is going to drive people, whether it's money. Self-preservation, recognition, or sex, okay. future promise. Yeah. If you use those, you should be able to figure out which one or which combination of those will get someone you're talking to like totally engaged. Mm -hmm. So if you can't figure out what's important to them beforehand, sometimes you just have to be open to the idea of discovering it when you're presenting. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you might not have the time to discover that in what you're doing. Yeah. So I would try to do as much homework on the people on the panel as you can find, on the companies that they represent, find out what's important to them, find out what's important to their companies, and then try to make your presentation resonate with those items. Yeah. And that's the same for any audience, actually. Okay, okay. I won't bother you much, much okay, longer. Just, okay. just, uh, just one last question. I've been asking everybody, okay. uh, or, or some people here. I just asked them because there, there were some brilliant presenters here, for, from my perspective, yeah. like from the, from the Czech guys and stuff. And I asked them, 
what did they take from your presentation? Because they're, uh, you know, they're already really good, but there are some really high points from your presentation. And I would like to ask you the same about Czech Republic or about Prague or about Tech Square and meeting these people. Is it what's some, my one takeaway? Yeah, yeah. What's your one takeaway? My one takeaway is that I see hundreds of people with good ideas and products and services. Many of them are kind of point solutions or a feature that could be put into other things. Every single company I've seen here in Prague, especially in, in this place, Startup Yard, have not been that. Maybe one came close, but if you look hard at it, it can really be a standalone type thing. So the depth and the breadth of the products that I've seen here are on par with anywhere else I've been. Which means you have just as much talent, just as much skill, and just as much hope and promise here as anywhere else. The biggest challenge that the Czech people have, as I believe the Norwegian people have, is that they're so humble that they don't want to even slightly brag or say, yes, we have 27 customers. Norwegians would say, yeah, we have uh, 27 customers. It's like they don't want to... They don't say like, well, we got a 27 customers. Exactly. They yeah. don't use that. Uh, friendly bragging is yeah, a good thing. Because yeah. everybody has to... Brag is a bad, you know, has a bad connotation to it, but in, in business, you need to brag. Softly. And that way, people will understand more of who you are and what you're capable of doing. And so long as you're willing to do that, I think people here in the Czech Republic and Norway will do just fine when they come to Silicon Valley to present. You just need to be, be more enthusiastic. Because if you just reserve, that's how people will be. They'll be reserved about your topic. They might get a little excited, but when you're displaying your enthusiasm for your topic, product, or service. Mm -hmm. People in the room can't help but to get excited. They don't know why they're excited, but they are. You've seen TED presentations, right? Yeah, yeah. Every once in a while, when I'm watching one of these TED presentations, I'll see a really lousy presenter. Bad, terrible, making all the wrong, all the mistakes up on the stage. But because they have enthusiasm that is like over the top, this, the presentation skills are not that important. You forget, and you just look at this person pre presenting, and wow, that's really exciting stuff. And it's because of their enthusiasm. This this popped up in my mind once through your when you when you said something like that in your presentation. What are your thoughts about, or what do you say about Steve Ballmer and his famous, uh, you know, presentation? Developers, developers, yeah, developers, yeah. developers, developers. I watched that video, and I think he did something magical that day. He did something that people are still talking. Yeah. Right. So, so, so it's like, I believe as they say, better bad advertising is good advertising, something like that? There's no such thing as bad advertising. Okay. He was weird. It was strange, but when you started seeing him without his jacket on, hmm. he ended up perspiring all the way down his shirt. Hmm. Hmm. He was excited. He was jumping. He was like, if you didn't get excited by watching him, there's no hope. You probably did. So some antic like that, some crazy thing like that, could mean the difference between being memorable and not. I don't know if he planned it. I would love to know if he actually planned that. Yeah, that's I what wonder I... if the people in his team knew he was going to do that. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought when you said, like, practice uh, one hour for every minute of your presentation. I was like, okay, if he, if he did this for two minutes, did he practice this for two hours? Nobody knows. In a case like that where you're trying to really pump up the audience, he's presented so many, 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 many times that he probably didn't need that full hour himself to do that one opening tirade, I'd call it. Okay. Uh, because he was just saying developers. Develop it was one word. Right? Yeah. So all he had to do was jump around, move around, keep yelling and screaming. I love this car better. Right. right. <laughs> so yeah. I, I actually point people to that video sometimes to get them to see something that's so far out yeah. that I'm not asking people to do that, but maybe something like this far out. 
Okay. Get people out of their comfort zone. That's why I recommended people go to an acting class or acting for the camera because it'll get you to think about things you're not thinking about. You know, that's, that's really smart, I would say. As I was, uh, I was sometimes proposing to different people, well, they can hire actors for them to do the presentation, you know. If they are so far away from giving a good presentation, good. they might be, you know, better off hiring someone. You could. I've seen that work, especially when you're doing videos and things like that, to yeah. have a, spoke, a spokesperson do the yeah. video, no problem. But when you do an on-stage demo or an on-stage presentation, yeah. uh, I think you need to be the yeah, one yeah, out there. Because they need to know it. That's, yeah. that's you. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you very much. It was a pleasure welcome. to meet you. It's been great to be here. <laughs> thank you. You ask me about all my inspirations. You won't be surprised if I tell you.